Hey everyone, Mitchell Bauer here with Essential Concepts of Landscape Painting. I recently finished this large painting called Citadel. And in this video, I'd like to walk you through the entire process from start to finish. And I think I can do it in a way that will demonstrate some good lessons on color, composition, no tan, and paint handling. Okay, so let's take a look. But before we start, I wanted to let you know about my two best-selling books on landscape painting. Super practical on a wide range of topics including shape interpretation, composition, and color. You can check them both out in the links below. A few years back when I was teaching in Italy, we took a trip to the beautiful hilltop town of Bagnoreggio. This was the beginning of a love affair with this place. I imagined a painting in which Bagnoreggio would be lit up in incredibly brilliant sunlight. But on the day that I was there, it was partially overcast, so I couldn't get a photo that captured the kind of light I really wanted. Many of the photos I found online were just like mine. Pretty photos, but they didn't provide the patterns of light and shadow that would suggest volume and make the hill town look monumental. Then I came across this photo, and it all came together. It had much clearer patterns of light and shadow. There was an alternating pattern of dark shadowed hills, then light, then shadow, then light again. Here I'll use some digital notans to demonstrate this more clearly. Notans are a type of compositional study, using just two or three values, that reduces that composition to its most basic, irreducible shape terms. Here's one of the photos I said didn't have clear patterns of light and shadow, and then it's black and white notan. Can you see how spotty the shapes are? They don't organize themselves into a cohesive and simple arrangement. Now here's the better photo I showed you a moment ago, and it's no tan. And you can see how much more ordered and simple it is, with clear alternating patterns of dark and light. By the way, you can learn more about the no tan on my website, including this short 13-minute video. Plus, there's a whole chapter on no tan in my new book, The Landscape Painter's Workbook, all links below. Now I was ready to start doing some compositional thumbnails. Would my composition be wide format, like all the photos I had seen? Or maybe a square? Or would a vertical format be better? Ultimately, I decided to go with a wider format. This struck a compromise. The wider format allowed me to show the breadth of Bagnoreggio, but it was also tall enough to support the upward thrust of the hill town rising out of the valley floor. Next were the color studies, which I loved doing, and I did quite a few of them. From the start, the main goal for me was to get Bagnoreggio to glow. I imagined a magnificent citadel rising out of the valley floor, glowing brilliantly in the sunlight. As you can see, I'm leaning toward a lighter valued palette that places emphasis on temperature differences and color contrasts more than strong value contrasts. As abstract as this one is, I feel like it came closest to suggesting the kind of light I was after, and it became the basis for the color I would use in the underpainting. Finally, I was ready to get going on the actual painting. I always start with an underpainting or some type of blocking to establish the basic composition and values. This underpainting is fairly monochromatic, but it approximates the average color and warmth from my best color study. So right from the start, I'm establishing the patterns of light and dark and the general color direction. Quite a bit of time went by before I picked up the painting again, so I got a fresh perspective and I saw that I needed to make a few adjustments to the composition. I darkened the distant mountains to make the top of Bagnoreggio stand out more. I added the diagonal roadway on the right. I steepened the slopes of the hill town on the left and the right, which made the whole town feel a bit taller. Next I start in with my initial applications of full bodied paint. You can see the initial hinting of the blue violet in the background mountain, and here's the first buildup of texture in certain places. My plan is to paint the stone facing of the city with lots of crusty texture and use less texture in the sky area. This is called tactile perspective, which I'll talk more about later. In the next several sessions, I continue to build up the texture. I do this with a combination of palette knife and brush. The colors I'm putting down in this texture layer are close, but they're not the final color. I'll fine tune them later by layering new colors over these texture layers. Here's the painting at mid-stage. It's pretty far along, but the final color isn't there yet. The diagonal roadway isn't complete, and the patterns on the distant hills aren't resolved yet. One of the things I do to bring out all this paint texture is what I call staining. First, I scrub in a relatively thin mixture of a darker but related color so that it gets into all the crevices of the paint texture. Then I go back and wipe out 
as much of it as I can with a rag. And I might even come back with some coarse sandpaper. What this does is return the top layer to its original color, but leaves the staining color held within the crevices. This emphasizes the texture of the paint and adds more textual variation to the surface overall. I've talked a lot about texture, so what's my thinking behind all that? For one thing, I really enjoy playing with paint in this way. It's not a rapid fire a la prima kind of painterliness or texture. It's slower and more deliberate than that. Second, varying the texture helps suggest where elements sit in space. Things that are closer to us, like the hill town itself, gets lots of texture, helping it come forward, and things that are farther away, like the distant hills in the sky, get much less texture, which helps set it back in space. And the shadows are kept thin. All this is called tactile perspective. And here's the final painting. The overall color has definitely shifted from where I started. It's less golden yellow now and has more of an orange hue running throughout. And the colors are deeper and darker overall. I worked quite a bit in the upper left area. It was really important to me that the colors coming from the sun and sky really felt like they would produce the colors that were causing Bagnareggio to light up this way. I resolved the diagonal roadway, basically by subduing it. If I had shown it as distinct as it actually appeared, it would have stood out too much and distracted from the overall impression. Also, the shadow areas are not too dark, and they're not as saturated as the sunlit areas but they are still filled with color and light. Lastly, I should say something about the centered composition. I know, by most accounts, it's a rule breaker. Of course, here, I've done it very intentionally. My thinking being that centering in this way brings a focus to the subject that makes it feel more iconic, which supports my initial vision, the power of the glowing hilltop city front and center. Okay, that's a wrap. I hope you found this video informative, and if you did, you can check out some of my other videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.